everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a Gina B. Aaron's Design Team video for the month of September. Our challenge this month, and I'm going to make sure I get it right because, you know, I always go off half cocked. So it says collab, some salvage my art, swap five by seven. Well, the person that swapped with me did not read those directions. <laughs> So I have um, Peg Robinson as my swap partner, and, you know, she sends me an envelope this size for a 5 by 7 swap. <laughs> and I'm going to show you all the goodies that came in the envelope. So let's see. We have People Ephemera. These are so cool. And then we have some Painted Leaves. If you put that the right direction, it almost looks like, well, never mind. Okay, we have some text, book text, in French. Oh, I can actually read some of this. This is funny. Whoa. Beaucoup. What is this? It looks like it's. it talks about food. Oh, it does. Le um, Le Petit Dijonet is a small meal. I'm not sure if that's breakfast or lunch. <gasps> These are very cool. Ooh, I might say that for me. Um, some, I think this is tracing paper. Some Tim Holtz paper stuff. And there's two of them in there. One with the postage and one with the butterflies. Uh, some of this from a magazine. A magnolia, um, Paris paper, I think it might be scrapbook paper of some kind, and then there's pieces of that same type material as the other Tim Holtz papers. Um, here's a digi paper. Here is, this paper feels cool. It looks like it's from a magazine of some sort and they're lamps. Here is more digi paper. This is material where she painted on the material. I'm um, not sure if this is muslin, but it looks very cool. She did a lovely design on it, and you can feel how bumpy it is. Then there's a bag of offcuts from some of Gina's stencils where we got the masks. So I have some of these. A piece of, I think it's either mixed media paper or it's watercolor paper, not sure. Something that was on, and this paper I think might be. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, well, the word will come to me after I stop the video, don't you know? And a more digi prints, and a piece of painted paper. So, I'm going to. You know, I'm so predictable. I'm going to make a book. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out how to incorporate all this stuff along with some of Gina's designs into the book to send back to Peg. And it's not going to be a 5 by 7 just saying. See you on the other side.
Okay, here I am with the wrap up for the design team video uh, Fix My Art swap for Gina B. Aarons. Uh, my swap partner was Peg Robinson, and this is what is left of the envelope that she sent me. There's, um, sorry, the Roku's going off. There's all kinds of tissue paper in here, you know, the Tim Holtz stuff. These lovely leaves, I wanted to use them, but I just didn't want to cut them all up. So I, I don't, I didn't use them. This was too big for what I had planned. I have a ton of these. I'm keeping this. I'm keeping these French words that are food related. I think they're about menus. Um, and then material and then this I think it's mixed media paper I'm not really sure what it is and then there's some kind of uh, I think it might be deli paper here and that's it that's all that's left of what she sent me and if you saw in the very beginning there was a ton of stuff so this is what I ended up with you saw me make this right here I'm sorry about the shadows let me turn the light on see if that helps any no <laughs> that's kind of bright all right um, Inside the envelope was a card that she sent me with a note in it saying, here's the stuff. I hope you can create something with it. But this, the sentiment, time flies when I'm with you, is what dictated the little book. The cover paper, the paper it's covered in is Peg's paper. The butterflies and all this came off the front of that card that she sent me. But it dictated to what's on the inside. The theme, the theme. All right, so my idea, and the inside is all Peg's paper too, the, the idea that I had was to create a memory book or a photo album of sorts for a trip that we all took in uh, October of 2018 to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So my intention was, where is it? My intention was to um, create things that she could put all the photos that we posted of our trip in here as a memory book. So I took her paper and I sewed a pocket. There's a tag in this one. This is more paper. This is scrapbook paper. And then I took some of the leftover snippets that I had and made a little pocket. And there's um, a little photo frame. Here's another one that she provided me with some black paper with lamps on it. And I just wanted the black part. And when it, when I cut it in the cuddle bug, it kind of frayed it and turned the edges white. So I thought that would look really cool on the Tim Holtz paper. Now these are not glued in because I could not get my printer to downsize photographs to put in here. So I'm going to leave this for her to do. But most of the work's been done. If she uses that it that way, whatever. There's a little a little tiny frame. Here's the big one that matches the little one on another page. Again, this is more Peg's paper. This is the Gina B. Aaron Scribble stamp that I really love. I haven't said that very many times, right? <laughs> and a large black frame because I thought the, this would tone down, you know, because it's blocked with a photo in it, it would tone down all the black and white and it would give it a good contrast still. Tim Holtz paper, and this is a pocket. If I can get it open, see the thing with long fingernails is they don't always come in handy. Anyway, so it's a pocket. Here's another pocket that I took leftover snippets of paper, put a little tag in it. Here's the other half of her paper where I put a larger tag, and this is um, a print, a digi print of on Gina in Gina's store sorry, of her uh, paper, her painting. So that's a Gina thing. Yeet. See if we can get back in there. Ah, son of a gun, it worked a lot better a few minutes ago. <laughs> All right, so this is just a piece of deli paper that I made into a pocket, and there is a frame inside here for her to use that's blue, which I thought would look good on here. Or, or the other side, or wherever she wants to put it. I'm not sure if I did this. I think this maybe was Peg stenciling on here 
and then I just outlined it with black or maybe I don't know I can't remember I've had the paper a while this is more of Peg's paper so I put these in here just in case like if she wants to reverse them or put them like this oops sorry like this more frames another pocket with three different tags it has Gina's digi paper and the, and Peg sent me a blue piece of digi paper and then I took Gina's stencil the flower stencil and stenciled part of it I didn't stencil the parts that stick out on it because it was just too big for what I wanted to do so I just stenciled the what I thought and perceived as to be the flower part did the white insides and then did the contrast with the uh, lime green then sewed it into three pockets I wanted to fold out tip in whatever you call them and then this page again with another black frame here's a there for that one this one and then this pocket still has more frames inside it so that's her card is what gave me the idea to do this the the sentiment so you never know where inspiration is going to come from. And I know she doesn't usually work in small little journals like this, but since she really doesn't have to do a lot of work in it, I thought it would make a great little photo album of the memories of our trip that we took. So I filmed everything and made this. When I filmed, I made this. Um, she sent me a large, it was pretty big, y'all saw it, I think, of this Tim Holtz paper. And I really love this tissue paper stuff. And then I started, you know, taking Gina's flower stencil and doodling on it and, and putting it on top of the Tim Holt stuff. But I forgot one important part. <laughs> I should have closed the top, which was not sewn or anything when I started this. This was an afterthought, basically. I should have done my stencil over it because it covers up the flowers and there's, you know, it's plain. And now because I put contact paper over it, I think it'll be a little tricky to redo the flowers. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I will put a fastener on it before I send it. And the reason I made this was because when I ship my books to anywhere for any reason, I like to open them up, put rubber bands on each side, and lay them flat. Because if you mail a book that's this small like this, this spine is an inch, it tends to get crushed in the mail. They don't care. It's not their job to care. It's just their job to get it from point A to point B. So I want to ensure that the spine whoops, that the spine is not crushed. So I like to lay them flat and I wanted an envelope large enough that I could lay this flat in it. But then I was looking at the stuff. I thought, okay, I'm all done. It's all filmed, edited, and ready to go. And I started looking through the stuff that I had left over and found something in there that I really liked and decided I had to make something else which you guys did not see on camera. So I had some Fab Fabriano um, watercolor paper, and I, I used the inside. I tore the cover off, and I liked the cover. It was sturdy enough, sort of like uh, cardstock, but not quite as heavy, and I thought that'll make a great cover. So I did a crease in it for the spine, and then I sat there looking at it and thought, wow, I really need to do something with this. She needs something that's not quite as bright as the other thing, but along the same lines. But in that stuff she sent me, there were these three people, or sets of people in there. I think they're Tim Holtz people. Of course, you know they're somebody's family. So since I had extra of the frames, I cut a whole bunch of them. You see, I have leftovers. So I thought this would be great to put on here. So I printed off two sheets of Gina's digi paper and I sealed it with the right after I covered it, I sealed it with uh, the matte matte medium. I didn't want it shiny. I wanted it to be kind of dull looking. And when I did it, the print from the brown smeared all over it. I was like, oh no. I fixed it. So what I thought was, well, I'll age it because these people are not new modern people. I'll make it look antique-ish. So I took 
the Walnut Stain from Ranger and this. And I, after I, the matte medium dried, I took it and I went around the whole thing with it and gave it even more brown that what, than what had already smeared. Then I took it and then did the edges later afterwards. Before I put the people on there, I kind of buffed the edges a little bit to give it a little more definition. I took an extra piece of really heavy-duty chipboard and put it in the spine. And I didn't want to sew anything in here. This is just an empty cover for Peg to use later. But I thought this would be a great rubber band thing because this is extra sturdy um, spine. So rubber bands won't cause the top and the bottom to cave. But if you want to sew through it, I think you might have to use a Dremel tool to get in there because that's some extra thick chip chipboard that I had. So then I had all her leftover papers. And I'm like, well, it's a shame to send all those bits and pieces back. So instead of taking another piece of paper and covering it solid on the inside, I took and tore up the leftover papers that I had that I used in the other little journal and I collaged it on the inside. And I kind of like it. It's something different. Unexpected when you open it like, whoa, that's very busy. But I kind of like it. So then I thought, okay, so I have to put these old these these people on here some way or another. So I thought, well, I had leftover frames. I took the walnut stain again on here and buffed it. This is these are bisquick boxes, cut out of bisquick boxes. So I flipped them over to the cardboard side. I buffed it with the walnut stain from Ranger. And then I amputated the bottom part of the people off. And I started fooling around with the arrangement on here. I thought this would make a cool photo album. Peg has some old family photos that she uses in her um, in her assemblage and some of her uh, things. And I thought this was, would be a great place for her to print the photos off and then store them in here as a place to keep that for a later date to cut them up or whatever she wants. She just slips them in the rubber bands. And this will remind her that these are the old photos. But I couldn't let these guys go to waste because they're awesome. And, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. After it smeared the beige on here, the green didn't smear. It was just the brown spots on here that, um, I don't know, the brown didn't do too well on the printer. And I thought, well, uh, we're going to have to fix it. So I did. And I am very pleased with the way this turned out. I really like this. I might go back over and take the walnut stain and buff this down a little bit so it's not quite as bright which I think I will now that I'm thinking about it. So this is what Peg's going to get. She's got a little um, plastic envelope with the Tim Holtz paper and the flowers on it. She's going to get the little memory keeper photo album thing. And then she's going to get this. And she's going to get this stuff too. <laughs> so... My package back to her will be every bit as fat as the one that she sent to me. All right, so that's it for the design team video for swap, swap art, fix my art, 5x7. Okay, none of this is 5x7. Oh, well, maybe this is, but, you know. There's enough stuff here. I don't think she's going to care. It's not 5x7. Okay? All right, I'll see you guys next month. Bye-bye.